All right, Sophie. Hi. Sophie, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from? Originally? I'm from San Diego. Uh, I've lived there my whole life, all 21 years in 21. the same house. And tell me about your family growing up. You have mom and dad? Uh, yeah, my parents are both high school sweethearts and they're still together. Um, so I've, I've had a really good like childhood. No, for, no, no crazy abuse or anything like that? No, I never had any um, sort of crazy abuse or anything like that. I had, I have an older brother who's four years older. Um, He's in med school and he's, uh, I'm really close with him. So sound, um, sounds like a great family. Yeah, I've, I've always had a great, like supportive family. I'm very um, privileged, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and yeah, my parents have always been really supportive and I just very, I never had to worry about sort of any um, finances or anything, which has been very, I'm very thankful for that I had that. But there are, there were a little bit negatives to the childhood, but not really involving my parents necessarily. I would say the the abuse of my childhood was the internet um, of being, because if you think about it, like my generation of, is the first and like only generation to have only known the internet. Like I've, all other like generations at least had some sort of time when they didn't have social media or the internet, but I had it, I've had it ever since. I had an iPhone when I was like in seventh grade. And I think that that was definitely um, led me to where I am today of how just thinking about how that affects your, you know, I, I, they should probably do like a case study on my, I would be the perfect example of how just the internet can sort of influence your whole life. So how would you, how would the internet affect your self image? And Well, so I think it sort of started um, the First, sort of like, I mean, a lot of my childhood, I can't really exactly remember, which also makes me think that there may have been some sort of like other trauma type thing that I don't really exactly know. But I, the most like significant thing uh, that I think really affected me was there, there's this website called Omegle and it's like this, you can, it's literally says on the web, meet, talk, meet strangers or like talk with strangers. and me and my, when I was in seventh grade, me and my friends just thought, oh, it'd be a cool idea to go and just talk to strangers. And it, it's like a video chat too. Um, so, you know, perfect example of what bad things can happen on there. And, um, you know, young, impressionable, like 12 year old me uh, would go on there and there'd be a lot of like older guys and um, a lot of, I would talk to them and, you know, just casual, like looking back on it, definitely like grooming, um, thinking that, you know, these putting my, these older guys, oh, they think I'm like pretty. And when I'm 12 years old and um, eventually they, I started, they would ask me to like take my shirt off, my top off and my 12 year old self just thought, oh, this is like normal. Cause I think I always, because I've always had a really close relationship with my dad in particular. And so I think I've always sort of sought out male validation my whole life, especially because my brother has always been, um, he's always had, he graduated with like 4.1. He's been super smart, um, always been very like, never like growing up, like never really got in trouble or anything like that. And so I always sort of saw that and I just wanted to like make my like, dad like get his like approval even though I've always had his approval too it's just I think I don't know if maybe I saw like that give a little bit more attention to my brother or what but I think that that sort of I've always there's just a common theme of like male validation throughout like my whole life and so I think that that's how easy I put my trust into like these older guys on on that I would like talk to and um and I have like one memory in particular of like I was over at my friend at the time, Kimmy's house, and we were on, or I was on Omegle in her room and she was like out in the living room. And then um, I was like talking with a guy, like full on, like had me like take my like top off and stuff. Just like, I think he was, you know, like masturbating or something. And she like walked in and I like told her like to get out. And then for some reason I like turned it like I was so like I don't know if it was like definitely projecting 12 year old self but I like told I didn't I told like our other friends that oh like Kimmy was on like Omegle like taking her shirt off like talking to people and I just like totally turned it around and so 
I, I don't know. I don't know why like that memory just like sticks with me for some reason. Um, but I think I just I was very like. I don't know if I was ashamed or something, but I just I didn't at the time I didn't know that it was like wrong of like, oh, these older guys I probably shouldn't be talking to. But it it definitely like brought into sort of put set up my mindset going into as I'm going into like high school at this point of, oh, like put like I can trust like these like I just want like these guys approval. And and I always like no matter like throughout my whole life, my looks have always just been very like important to me because I I honestly I don't think I'm like good at anything necessarily I don't think I have any talents I've never really had any like particular hobbies so I'm like okay the only way I'm gonna get successful in life is if I if by my looks if I'm pretty um, and so as I'm going into high school I just sort of I wanted to I mean everyone just wants to like fit in and stuff in high school and um, and I had a boyfriend at the time named Cassidy, but he was like a very just like high school, you know, fake, like not fake relationship, but like high, not a very like significant relationship. And he was like, he wanted to, he was going to break up with me because his reasoning was because I went on my phone too much when we hung out. Um, and I, it was this other guy named Raymond who told me he was, they were on water polo together and he told me that he was going to break up with me and Raymond was two years older um, and so when I like knew that Cassie was going to break up with me I like of course took initiative of like oh I'm going to break up with him first and so I did um, and then Raymond sort of took that as like a to swoop in I guess of like a whole other and so at this point like I I'm oh like trusting these guys like okay like this guy is giving me attention so like I'll you know trust him and stuff and uh, that definitely was the wrong decision because that um, I ended up dating Raymond. Uh, well, Raymond uh, groomed me and took my virginity um, at 14, just thinking that that was like okay and stuff. And I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it and like that he was older. And so, I mean, it was still like, you know, legal. He was like just two years older and I was 14. Um, so we ended up dating and that was... It was a really, we dated for two years and it was a really abusive relationship. This is sort of when like the abuse started. That would be sort of like a common theme. The, the approval of men? Well, just, yeah, the approval of men, but like him, um, like sexually assaulting me like a lot. And, but I, me thinking that like it was fine because we were dating, um, just a lot of like, yeah, I, I, there was quite a few times I would sleep over and he would just like have sex with me, even if I like didn't, I would sort of just not really be into it. Cause also I was getting like, I was getting like a lot of like UTIs at this point too. And I didn't really like know what was happening. I just felt like just weird in like my body and stuff, especially cause I'm like 14, 15 years old. And, um, and, and uh, yeah, he just, there was also another part of the relationship is that he would, always like be a follow like oh, this would this was like the one thing that would make me like so upset is that he followed like so many like instagram models and all this stuff and i it made me like really insecure of just like oh i want to because he'd like comment on their post too and i would find it because this is when instagram used to have like the feature where you could see like what you could like look at like the people you follow like the post they like which they got rid of the feature now um which is probably good um and I would like see that and I'd wake up and I'd just be so like just like devastated but I would bring it up to him and then the minute like I would be like oh like I'm you know why did you do like show like that I was upset it would just be like turned around of like oh well like why don't you trust like why why are you making like a big deal out of this like I was just you know she's just some like random girl like uh, like and just all this stuff and I would just be like okay yeah and sort of go along with it because I just wanted to not really, you know, I just wanted him as like my boyfriend. And so I started like, he would, cause he'd follow like a lot of like fitness models. And so I'd, I went on this like, oh, like I'm into fitness and stuff. And my mom actually worked at a gym. She worked at a gym for like 10 years, um, like a pretty like nicer gym. Um, so I'd go there to like work out and I was like starting to get into like yoga and stuff. and. 
but it never really was just like it was like oh I wanted to be like strong and stuff and I also I I played water polo throughout high school um, and I was varsity golf captain um, senior year but I was very so I started getting into like sports and just want even though I knew that that wasn't like who I was or like what I was into I was always just very like I've always been very sort of you're doing it for his approval yeah exactly like that was not I've never really been into like you know and so that, le that, that led you into more social media yeah exactly and so yeah moving forward we um we I finally like broke it off and um we broke up and that was the first day of junior year um and so I I sort of like I don't know I it's just weird because I can't even like think back of like why I how I ended up like that but I I would just sort of let I thought that oh guys like me because of how I look and how I how my body is because I was very um you know I was very like I don't want to like come out my like minor's body but I had like an you know an appealing body to like high schoolers and um so I would just like I would just let guys like the, right after I got out of the relationship guys just wanted to like hook up with me and stuff and I just let let them um all throughout like the rest of my high school career and it I definitely like was a form of self-harm now looking back on it of, like reflecting of just letting guys like have sex with me and the one then junior year um I was over at my friend's house and we like I think drank a little bit and um we there was like some other people there that went to a different school and I was drunk and then I we were going to bed and um there was this guy there that went to a different school that he was like friends with and he sort of insisted on like sleeping with me because there was or not like he like actually physically like sleeping in the same bed with me and um and I was just like okay and I, I even asked him like beforehand of like oh like are we gonna like hook up or whatever and he's like no and so I just went to sleep um and then I just in the middle of the night I just sort of woke up and he was having sex with me and I just froze because I didn't know like I like didn't know if it was like actually happening or not and I sort of just like went back to sleep after a little bit I, I can't even really like f remember exactly but he was raping me and then I just went back to sleep and I told myself like oh that didn't actually happen that wasn't real and then a couple hours later or something I woke up again in the middle of the night because I heard him talking and he was talking to his like grandma um she I just like remember that conversation and then I went back to sleep and then I woke up and I sort of was just like oh like that was definitely just like a dream that happened and then we went out to like have breakfast in the downstairs and he started telling them like, oh yeah, like my grandma called me like in the middle of the night. And it just sort of like hit me of like, okay, if that happened, then like that definitely also happened. Um, and so that, that I've had been a lot of, I've gone through a lot of trauma therapy for that specific event. But then sort of that continued just as I graduated and went to college um, of just thinking that like, I'm only good for like my body and my looks and like I have to I'm here to like sort of I don't want to say serve like men but like letting them like just do whatever they want to me and so I same with college I I went to a year um at a university Cal State University and um that was that was definitely what uh messed me up a lot of just it was a very it's the number one like party school and I would just get like blackout drunk with like my friends and stuff because we'd go to parties and stuff but I was doing it sort of like a okay I'm gonna get blackout drunk so that when I have sex with guys later I'm not gonna remember it um and that would just be sort of like what I would do in that and it that went on throughout like the whole year and also at this point I should mention that I I uh I always like loved my body like because I, I just thought like oh I'm you know I'm very just like I was very like healthy and stuff like I you know very like curvy and stuff I, I was very just I loved my body and like who I was I was very like happy with who I was and then I after drinking like so much and stuff which 
that definitely that made me gain weight um, by the end of the year, and I, I gained about like ten pounds or so. I was still like you know I was like one thirty or something as so I wasn't like really over I wasn't overweight or anything, but that sort of like triggered something in my brain of like oh like I need to just like lose a little bit of weight, and that's how it started of just like oh like guys like I need to because I also like met a girl that was a lot skinnier than me and so I, and she got like a, a lot of like guys and stuff and I was like super just like oh I want to be her and so I was like okay I'm gonna like lose just like five pounds or so to get back to ten five ten pounds to get back to like my weight that I'm normally at so, so competition is a big part of all this oh yeah <laughs> that competition is and then the social media exactly that's just, just feeds into it exactly that so it that definitely turned into once i lost like the 10 pounds or whatever it was and i'm like oh this is a little bit easy i'm i'm kind of good at this and i've never been like good at anything in my whole life so i was like okay like i'm just lose like a little bit more and stuff in it and it's also just it's like addicting it's definitely you know it's an addiction and that just sort of it, it turned into like oh as i'm losing weight like oh i really like I need to keep losing weight. Like, how am I going to do this? Like, because at a certain point when you are losing weight at first and stuff, you lose it pretty fast. And then when you get to a certain weight, it, it you know, slows down a little bit. So I was kind of frustrated with how it slowed down. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to like start doing Coke to like lose weight more. Because I also, I did drugs like casually, like throughout high school and like college, but very just like recreational, not like, like it was a problem or anything. And um, and so I started doing coke pretty often, like every day kind of for a little bit. And I wouldn't even get like high or anything from it. Cause I, I've pretty, I've ADHD. So I don't know if that like part of it that I don't, stimulants don't really have like a effect on me necessarily. I just feel normal, but I knew that it was making me lose weight. So I kept doing it. And eventually that sort of led to, oh, I can't really sleep so i'm gonna like okay i'll start doing xanax and stuff and that that was my that is, was where i got hooked for sure and that i was just do, i started doing xanax pretty often like every night sort of not even it was it wasn't even about like oh i'm doing this to lose weight now it was about like i'm doing this so i can silence all the thoughts in my head of like thinking about food and just my weight 24 7 and so I started doing a bunch of, I started doing Xanax and I, that one led to doing ketamine every night and every day. And I, I wasn't even like conscious of like my body really at this time because I was so just like high all the time and I was getting like in trouble with my parents all like, and then this was also like when quarantine happened. And, um, and so I just, the unemployment, getting unemployment money, I was just doing like drugs, just spending so much money on them. And I, then sort of everyone kind of like sort of was like okay you're really skinny like we, like you kind of like making me realize like oh you're really skinny and next thing i knew i was i had lost like 40 pounds about 40 pounds i i was 82 pounds um what, and are, you, what are you now 82 you're 82 I'm, right now yeah i'm back there yeah and so i like freaked out and so i was like okay yeah like i'm gonna go to treatment and so i went to treatment to residential five days in I they gave I because in eating disorder treatment they don't let you go to the like close the door when you go to the bathroom at least like in residential because obviously they're you know don't want you to purge mm -hmm. um so they watch you like go to the bathroom like like okay I don't I can't like go to the bathroom while someone's like watching me so then they gave me a laxative um in eating disorder treatment which apparently I am severely allergic to I went to anaphylactic shock and um, I was like, okay, I'm going to leave treatment. Um, so I left treatment and then a couple months later I went to like a PHP and I would like weight restored and, but it, it was just like, okay, I weight restored, but my mind, like my mind is not changed. Like mentally I'm still like wanting to like lose weight. Cause the minute I like put on the weight to get back to like the minute I weight restored, which was like about like 105, um, for my height, which I'm five, four. Um, I was like, oh my God, like I freaked out and I sort of just like went back into like the mindset of the eating disorder. And I, 
because I also went was like went I got sober a little bit for this, and so I started you, like doing you drugs. You, again. you felt you were too heavy at, at yeah. one hundred and five. Yeah, I, yeah, and I I just thought that I was like so just like fat and just huge and stuff. So I started just losing weight again more and doing drugs more and. Uh, I never really dabbled in like opioids or anything, but the one time I did, um, it turned out to be fentanyl and I accidentally overdosed on fentanyl. Um, and my, I, I owe like my whole life to my cat cowboy because she found me lying on my back, um, in my room, like choking on my vomit. And she, <laughs> um, she went and she like ran into my parents' room and she like jumped on my mom's chest. Um, and my mom like woke up and she just had like a sixth sense, like mom intuition. Like your, like, your cat did this. Yeah, my cat cowboy. And um, wow. cause, yeah, cause so I, I fostered during quarantine, I fostered six kittens and their mom all by myself. Well, my mom helped too, but I took care so of them. Your, your cat. Yeah. And I, your mom that you were ODing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And wow. she, yeah. So I, I have always had this very special connection with Cowboy because I, I ended up adopting her and her mom, Effie. Um, and so I've raised her my whole life, or not my whole life, my whole, ever, her whole life. And so yeah, she found me. Um, and it, the, when they took me to the ER and they gave me like Narcan, obviously. And I, I, I remember also when they, they, I was like kept falling back asleep when they, I was, in the hospital and my breathing was like going back down. So they were trying to like wake me up and stuff. And I like asked them, I'm like, could I like, cause I was prescri I'm prescribed Adderall, which I've never I've, like abused or anything surprisingly. Um, and I like asked them, I was like, oh, can I just like take my, can I take my Adderall to like wake up a little bit? Not really, cause I didn't realize that I was like overdosing. And then I, I did realize, but they told me that if it was just a couple minutes later, um, I would have died. Um, so I really, I owe, like, she, Cowboy, like, literally saved my life. Your, your cat saved your life. She did. And I love that cat so much. She's a black cat. She's perfect. Um, and so I, I, you would think that, like, accidentally overdosing would be sort of, like, a little bit wake-up call. Like, okay, like, let, like, maybe I shouldn't do this. And so I got, like, sober for a little bit. And then I, as the sort of, oh, need to, like, lose weight came back, it, drugs started getting like really bad again because that was always like I was only really abusing drugs because I just wanted to lose weight or I just wanted to silence the things not not realizing how much damage I was putting my body through like at that like low of a weight and just doing like I was doing like a gram of ketamine a day like like taking like nine milligrams of like Xanax every night just like putting my body through so much stress all because I just wanted to like lose weight and that's all and, that and the, and the reason you want to lose weight is to attract more men you think it's well that's kind of what i don't or, think or, that or attract it, a man that's I, I i looking back on it it's weird because now i it definitely sort of just transformed of like needing to oh it went from needing to like male validation to like oh needing like my own validation because i knew that like guys aren't really attracted to necessarily to like a very underweight body, you know, and, but in my mind, I was like, this is what's attractive. Like, I don't even care about like how the guys look at me. Like I need to care. Like, I just want to like be happy with myself. And that's only, I'm only gonna be happy with myself if I'm, you know, severely underweight. And I also think part of it was that I was so, I just wanted to like shrink myself because I thought that if I would shrunk myself and that I, um, I would just have like a more undesirable body that I wouldn't get taken advantage of at this point. So I, I think that that had, has a lot to do with just wanting to just shrink myself. And um, anyways, just I flash forward, I, I um, in 2021, I, I ended up uh, having, I went through Xanax withdrawals, I had seven seizures. Um, and part of that was also malnutrition related. And so I was in the hospital for a week and I went to rehab. Um, and then I was, after I got out of rehab, I was sober for like seven months. And this is just very recently in like the 2021. And I was like talking with this guy and I really liked him. We were like, had like a situationship for like three months. And so we weren't 
dating, but we were doing all the things that couples do, but he was still like talking to his ex and I knew it, but I was just like, oh, it's okay. Like, you know, he'll choose me eventually. Um, didn't end up choosing me. Um, and so that, and I was like, I was weight restored. I didn't really, I was, wanted to lose weight still, but it was just like, I felt generally like happy. So it wasn't like my priority necessarily. It was always in the back of my mind, but when that happened, it was like, oh, okay, time to like do what I feel like what's making me comfortable is like going back to like lo the losing the weight and stuff. And then I started, I joined like so online, like sort of eating disorder, like communities specifically on like Twitter. And in that just com in that com like community is that definitely has done like a number on me because now I'm like, oh, I'm getting, I need validation from other, pe other people with eating disorders. Like, cause they're, it's just, it's so like weird to, it's so like, it just doesn't make any sense, but it, the competitive aspect of it, it's like, cause it's like, who's, who's going to win? Like when, you know, cause it's either you recover or you die really. Um, and so I would, I, post like body checks that's what like the main thing I body check probably like 30 times a day it's 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 really bad and so I'd po start posting body checks and like as I'm like losing weight I'd get more like you know attention from like other people with eating disorders and like oh I'm getting because it's like one thing for like someone without an eating disorder like probably like looks at like me or like anyone you know at this weight and just think like, oh wow, they're like really skinny. And like that, you know, my dad always makes sort of comments of like, he doesn't really like want to like look at me. Cause it, I mean, he doesn't like say it like that, but it just, it makes him so like sad and stuff. Um, and, but to me, I like look at my, I still look at myself and I don't think I'm like skinny. Um, and so getting that sort of like, oh, other people with how, eating. How difficult is it for you to maintain this weight? Are you using drugs? Um, right now I'm not using drugs. Well, I had like a relapse, um, like, like a couple of weeks ago of just like, I did like, I got with just with ketamine and I did Xanax like once. But you, you, you can maintain this weight without much effort or? Yeah, at this or, point. Or are you purging and doing things like that? No, I've never purged. Um, I've always, I've never been able to, which is probably a good thing. Because do, you, I, do you eat very little? Yeah. So I, um, I would say on average, I eat like probably like five to 600 calories um, calories a day. Yeah. And I'd never, I'd never exercised besides like when I sports in high school and stuff, but with the eating disorder, I sort of just like kind of cheated my way to like losing weight of like, Oh, I'm going to do drugs. Cause like that suppressed my appetite. But I, at a certain point I like, I got to like, Oh, I can do this like sober too, of like not eating. Cause when you're my, like, I think about constantly, like well, all I think about is, food all day of like when is the next time I'm gonna eat like what am I gonna eat um when I'm at work like thinking about like how am I how do I look like how's my body look to other like people right now like to other people I think I'm skinny it's just it's genuinely like all I think about it's all that's on my mind ever and it's it's really changed like I've sort of become just like a shell of a person in a way like of who I used to be like I'd, I've isolated everyone because I'm besides the other eating disorder people that I was like friends with on the internet and I don't really have any like friends now and it just become that is like my number one priority and I don't ever know how I'll sort of snap out of that of how because there's nothing like I, and I'm like completely self-aware like oh I could definitely die like at this point I have you, you understand the problem inside and out it sounds like yeah I'm yeah I understand the problem and I have like already have health issues from it I'm like pre-osteoporosis at 21 years old and I have had um I I've just recently too have been experienced like a ton of hair loss which has been very hard for me um I used to have really big like thick full hair and I've really thinned out um and even like that, like knowing that, oh, like I'm vitamin D deficient, anemic. Um, I'm just like, oh, it's fine. Like, it's not gonna happen to me. Like, I'm not gonna die. Or like, and I think like, oh, there's people with eating disorders that are like 30 or 40. So like, I can do this. I can do this at my age and I'll, I'll recover in like a little bit. I'm just gonna give it like a little bit more time, but it, it never goes away. <laughs> Do you, do you think there's a solution to your problem? It's your mindset, clearly. Yeah, I mean, I know that there is like a solution. It's just the fear of gaining weight is more than honestly, I'd rather 
it's horrible to say, but like I'd rather die like skinny than than gain weight, which is like, and I don't know how I'll like get myself when you to- were, When you were 105 pounds, you felt- Yeah, I st like I look at that and I think I was like huge. Anything like, even if, like I look at myself when I was like in the 90s and I just think I look like, like huge like how like how did I like at the time I like thought I was like oh kind of skinny but now that I'm skinnier looking at that I'm like oh like I'd never want to look like that are you, are you happy right now <laughs> yeah happy in a way it, it's that's the thing is like losing weight and like being skinny is like I think that that is the only that and cowboy are like the only things that I think make me happy but I know that it's like artificial it's not actual happiness it's just happiness from getting that validation of like people like online and just feeling like I'm just getting validation of like that I'm killing myself almost in a way. And it's, but to me, it's like that I found like the one thing that I'm like good at, good at. And so I'm going to like stick with it. And I just, I don't know how I'll ever like, I've been to, tr I've been to multiple treatment centers and I, nothing has ever changed my mindset of like, accepting weight gain like no matter what and I don't know like what is gonna change that I don't know how I'm gonna like ever get out of it and especially because eating because eating disorders typically are more prevalent like people develop them in like early teens um, but I, d I developed it at 19 and so I'm like okay well I'm sort of a late bloomer and I'm gonna have it you know people have already I'm I know people that I've had it for like 10 years already so you know, I'm just, I'm going to have this forever. And that's, and you do have it, you know, forever in a way. It doesn't ever go away. Like the thoughts, you just sort of learn how to manage it from what I'm told in the treatment. And that just gives me no hope of like, well, I'm going to be stuck like this for the rest of my life. So I may as well just, you know, be skinny because that's all that makes me happy. And it's just, it started to, it's definitely re now recently as it got, worse because now that I'm like have been in this sort of community which I've had five Twitter accounts get banned so I don't have a Twitter account at the moment but um get banned because because it you put promoting self that's what they say promoting self-harm because there's a whole yeah there's a whole community on because Twitter. you were so, so thin and it... yeah so like posting it and like posting like body checks and so they definitely like you know get rid of accounts like that or because I I also I I have a pretty big following on TikTok, like a hundred thousand followers and i even though i don't do i don't do anything i just post like my outfits but it that has turned into a lot of you know looking at my body and it's that's i know that that's why a lot of people follow me and i know that it's a lot of girls following me because i'm skinny and that it does it makes me a little bit sad in a way because i i don't i know that people are like looking at that and like using that as sort of it's called thinspo of like a reason to like want to like you know lose weight and that definitely makes me a little bit uncomfortable to think about like you know younger girls and stuff looking at me and thinking that that they want to look like me but even just like that i'm like okay that's not even enough to like make me want to like you know change and but um but yeah like now that i'm i'm so like immersed in like the community and the culture in a way like um, I literally like I have I wear this red bracelet that I've wore for like months now and this is like a significant thing in the eating disorder community to like show like oh like other people with an eating disorder like wear a red red bracelet and stuff if you you know but I've never seen anybody in real life with it but it's just so like I I have made it my gen like my identity like this is who I am this is like you know what I'm gonna be for the rest of my life it's just like you know I'm gonna be you know, known, my legacy is going to be, you know, an anorexic, I guess, or I don't know. And it, so I'm now it's even more so I'm so just like, it has just consumed my mind and has such a like grip on me that it's made it so much harder to, to even begin to want to like accept weight gain or anything. Like I had gained a little bit of weight like a couple weeks ago. Um, like I was like 88 or something and I like freaked out and I like went back to that's when I was relapsed with the ketamine and I just went back to do that even though I know that the drugs and stuff has definitely like put I'm not gonna say ruined but it's definitely affected my relationship with my parents because I've I've always had a really good relationship with them and I live with them still um 
So they've, it definitely affects them and makes them sad seeing that they can't do anything because I'm an adult and they can't force me into treatment or anything like that. And, you know, they just feel like sort of hopeless. But I just, even that, like thinking about how sad I, my parents are and stuff and how, and I think also just like, I don't want cow, I don't want to die and like leave cowboy by herself. What, what, what do you think the core of it all is though? I don't know. <laughs> like That's the thing is like, I don't know. And it's like, I don't know what, really just like how is like why this is happening to me because I feel just so like it's my own like fault because I had a good childhood I've always had good parents you know very supportive I've, I've never had any like necessarily like abuse like in that sort of sense and so I'm like why is it why am I so like fucked up like in a way like why how did I end up like this and it just kind of frustrates me because I don't no and so then i just think that i'm never nothing's ever gonna get better because i don't know and um and even like yeah i'm like i'm in therapy right now and it still is just like not better because i if you're not like in that mindset to sort of accept weight gain it's you're never gonna like recover because you have that's like the first step i mean recovery is for sure possible but for me, it's just like, oh, it's possible, but it's not possible for me. So and even though I know it is and I, don't, I just I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the core of it is. And I don't because, um, yeah, it's I mean, it started out with sort of like the male validation, but now it's definitely turned into I think control definitely has a big aspect of it because I just feel like I've never I've never had control of like my own body in a sense because I've always just sort of like let other people, let other guys have control of it. So this is like, for me, like a way for me to control it. Like I can control how I look and what I eat and I can't control anything else in my life because, you know, I, you know, I, I, my parents have like a lot of control on me in the sense because they, for good reason, you know, I've lied to them and done a lot of bad stuff. My drug use has caused me to do a lot of bad stuff like specifically with my parents that I definitely regret and so they have a lot of like control on me in that sense of just wanting you know to make sure that I'm safe and stuff and so I'm like okay this is the only thing that I can control in my life so I'm gonna keep you know doing it and it it's just yeah it, it's completely consumed me and I feel like I don't even it's I it's affected my work life for sure. I just had to put my two weeks in on a job because I I just I can't like I get so exhausted and like fatigue like walking around and stuff and I I just I know I feel physically horrible like all the time and even that is like not enough to I I'm like okay I'd rather feel like physically horrible but be skinny than you know have a happy you know life doing stuff and going out with like friends and stuff and be like, okay, like a healthy weight, not even like, you know, overweight, like a healthy weight. And that's when my parents are like, okay, we just please get to like the literal like bare minimum. They've even tried to bargain with me of like, okay, getting to like 95, like or something, even though that's still underweight, they're just like trying to, but I'm, I'm just like, no, I can't like that's, I can't even imagine ever being like back in the nineties or higher above than that, even though I, don't know how I'm going to maintain, you know, 82 pounds for the rest of my life. And that's what frustrates me the most is, is just thinking like, okay, how am I going to, you know, what thinking about like the next day of like, okay, what am I going to like die to? Cause that thing's, that goes in my head a lot too, is like, okay, am I going to die? Because even though I know that there's so many people with eating disorders that are, you know, more emaciated and older and stuff but I also have this component of you know I put a ton of stress on my body with the amount of drug use I've had and you know that so I know that that affects even more so of like risk of dying and stuff and so that definitely goes on throughout my head but it's I just like don't care in a way and it's not like I'm suicidal like I don't want to die but it's at the same time it's like okay I could die and I don't really care necessarily like I don't want to but I don't really care um and uh, yeah I don't know I don't like trying to think back of like where you're what the core of it is I don't, honestly don't know like in it a, a lot of it could be just because I have you know when you have a restrictive eating disorder or just restrictive diet in general you get really 
bad brain fog of just like not really, you know, thinking of not knowing, like I don't have, I know I have thoughts. I don't like to say I don't have thoughts, but I'm so consumed by just eating disorder related thoughts or whatever that I just, I don't even think I, I can't think of like anything else or really carry up. Like it's giving me a ton of anxiety. Like I have really bad social anxiety now talking with people um, and it's, I mean, it's very like, you know, if I would have done an interview back in like high school when I was, you know, at a healthy weight and not restricting my eating, probably would have been, you know, talking a little bit more, more, I don't know how to explain it, just not, you know, anxious and stuff like that, but it's. Well, you're certainly intelligent enough to figure this out. You're, you're beautiful as either thank way. You. I'm sure if you were heavier or skinnier, you'd be still beautiful. Thank you. And that's another thing is like with the intelligence that I've never, I've never thought I was smart or anything like that. I've never been, yeah, like, so I've never been good at anything. Like I played sports, never been like really. It's almost like your self image is the. Yeah, that is, is the issue here. For sure. And, and that can change over time. Yeah. As you get older. Yeah, yeah. It's just, but in a way it's like, I don't, I want it to change, but I also like don't want, like I want to get better, but like I don't. No, right now better. at 21 you don't, but, yeah. but at 27 you might. Yeah, and I hope that, you know, that is the case. And I, I just, I don't think that, I can't like picture myself ever being better in a way because I've always just sort of had these you know in a, different forms of self-harming throughout my whole life like you know with letting guys have sex with me all throughout high school and then now with like the eating disorder is definitely a huge thing of self-harm and I've also you know actually physically self-harmed too and the cutting yeah that's some I've I'm not too often but definitely like a so I also have I have borderline personality disorder and that is uh definitely a big source of my impulsivity of um, with the drug use and I really like not good with money it's definitely like addicted to like shopping too and stuff and just it um, so yeah like the self-harm and um, and um, I seem like that's something I like start talking about stuff and I like just completely forget what I'm saying because I just have such bad brain fog um, it's all right <laughs> yeah. so, Sophie, thank you very much for the interesting talk. Thank you. You're fascinating. Thank you. I mean, it's, a, it's a stubborn problem for a lot of people. Yeah, it definitely. And it takes some, some people are overweight, some people are underweight. And yeah, and that's some people are fine weight and they, they have a problem, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. The people, there's definitely a stigma, I guess, when people think of like, just the average person thinks of like the word anorexia. You know, they probably have this image of like a really emaciated, like super like, you know, unhealthy, severely I've underweight. Seen, I've seen much skinnier girls. Than yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And um, and it's but actually the most the most like not popular, but common eating disorder is binge eating disorder. Um, and that in only f I think four or six percent or there's some like 12. It's a really low number percent of people with eating disorders are actually underweight um, because it's you know, binge eating disorders is more common. Um, and so I think that people just, you know, think that also just should be like a common rule is that people just shouldn't comment on other people's bodies in general, um, whether you're overweight, underweight, whatever. It's just people should not make any comments on it because that definitely like comments people have made specifically this one thing that if I could adv give advice to anybody of like what not to say to someone with an eating disorder is because when I like weight restored, if people would say I looked healthier, that would just be like the end like that would I look at the word healthier. I'm like fat. So like that, you know, saying that, you know, you can't say anything about a woman's weight. I've learned exactly. No. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. My parents are like walking around eggshells with me like constantly because it's it's just so even like the smallest thing of like of just like you think because it's so competitive and like even like the comment that you just made of like oh I've seen girls much skinnier than me I'm like or skinnier than me that's I mean nothing I knew that you know he didn't mean any harm by it but even stuff like that I'm like okay you everything, know I've, everything you say can be yeah it just it everything can just be translated it, it makes no sense to average people because they're like you know I didn't mean any like harm by that you know I was saying that as a you know as a good thing in a way of like you know you're healthier and surf or whatever but it's it's so just like you want to be sick like i want 
to be sick and like unhealthy and just sort of it definitely is an attention thing too in a way of like but I know it's like negative attention but that's also just another thing of just wanting you know attention throughout my whole life very very interesting talk yeah thank you thank you very much and good luck thank you